Hey everyone, welcome to My Wife the Dietitian, a weekly podcast about lifestyle and healthy eating. I'm Rob and together with my wife Sandra, we invite you to join us on this informative yet entertaining journey through the complex world of healthy eating. We'll cover everything but the kitchen sink. Each week we'll discuss topics ranging from how to protect yourself from developing cancer, spicy foods to rev up the libido, to caring for your palliative grandfather with Alzheimer's. We'll also delve into more complex issues like, what the heck is oat milk? Why doesn't my butt fit into these jeans? And every guy's favorite question, will eating spinach really make it bigger? Join us each week as we strive to educate, enlighten, and entertain you. With the heat of summer comes the real risk of dehydration for those who spend extensive amounts of time outdoors or for those who are more vulnerable and don't drink enough fluids. Being thirsty may not be the best way to tell that you need to drink more. Drinking enough water can help prevent dehydration and long-term consequences such as specific cancers, heart disease, kidney stones, and obesity. Join Rob and I to discover why this essential element can be taken for granted and five tips to start today to help increase your fluid intake. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 26 of My Wife the Dietitian. Today we are going to be talking about water. And keeping hydrated in the dry season. Yeah, it's hot. It's summertime now. And uh, Yay, it's... finally it's summer. Yeah, finally. <laughs> exactly. So Sandra, I'll let you start. We're just, uh, you're the expert. We're going to talk about uh, everything you have written down here. That's right. Well, you know, with summer here and people enjoying the great outdoors for physical activity and for work and for hobbies, it's more important than ever to uh, make sure you're getting enough fluid. And we'll talk about how to maintain hydration for good health. That's true. And it's it's a year round thing. I mean, it's not just summertime. We need to think about hydration, but you're more prone to being dehydrated in the hotter weather. Absolutely, yeah. So that's why we thought we would do it at the beginning of summer now, so we can all think about it through the summer. And you know, Leonardo da Vinci said, water is the driving force of all nature. It is, yep. And it's everywhere. It is. And there's a Slovakian proverb saying, pure water is the world's first and foremost medicine. Yeah, water is a good medicine if we know how to uh, how to use it. Well, I think we take it for granted. It's easy to take for granted because it's, you know, something that we've always had access to and many people didn't grow up drinking water. Uh like older generation when I talk to people, they're not used to drinking water on a regular basis. Yeah, and I think we need to drink a lot. Well, it 60% of the human body is made up of water. And uh, 50 to 80% of our body weight is water. Right, right. So you think, you know, you step on the scale and people think, oh, it's all fat. Or, you know, the first, uh, when you weigh yourself in the morning, you weigh less because you have lost water over the night. (laughs) Right, (laughs) So it's actually the water weight that affects our day-to-day fluctuations usually. Right. It is an essential nutrient, so that means the body cannot make enough of it on its own. Okay, right. So that's why we need to drink. Yeah. It's, it's It's amazing how many bodily functions it affects as well when you're not getting enough water. Now that I understand it a bit more from living with my wife, the dietitian. Um, yeah, it's amazing how many things that affect. I'll, I'll say to Sandra, "Oh, I'm feeling blah blah blah," and she'll be like, "Oh, you're probably dehydrated. You're not drinking enough water." I'm like, "Really? That's <laughs> that's related to that? Okay." Well. And maybe it's because I looked in the toilet bowl and I noticed that your pee was you concentrated. You shouldn't be saying that. It's nasty. Well, we talked about that on another episode. How yeah, but that's you're a not good like sneaking indicator. in after I've been in the washroom to like have a peek at no, what's in there. No, not on purpose. But you know, that's the thing about nutrition. It's, uh, it's you know, all bodily functions and urination and poop are all part of it. Yes, they are. <laughs> it's, it's how we can monitor ourselves and our hydration level. All right. Did, did you know that we can only survive a few days without water? 
with other nutrients. There's a deficiency that can take the it can take weeks or months or years to develop, but with water, just few days. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, it's like a plant. I mean, like you look at what plants do when they're not watered and they're all like falling over and droopy and drying out. It's it's pretty quick. Oh yeah, so. actually, I'm just looking at that one over. I think I just a second. Can you press pause? There. Okay. Now my avocado plant has gotten a little bit more uh, water in the soil. Yeah, there we go. (laughs) Uh, You know, dehydration can happen pretty quickly and it impairs the activity of important enzymes in our liver. Okay. The definition of dehydration is losing 1% of your body weight from fluids. So for an example, if a 170 pound man, uh, about almost two pounds of weight they would lose about two pounds of weight, and that's uh, considered dehydration. If they're dehydrated, they would lose two pounds. Yeah, that's like a two. Like a formula kind of. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So two a lot pounds. of a oh. lot of remember I said the weight fluctuations. Yeah, is that what you mean, like water weight? Oh, totally. Like, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and there's people that are on medications and diuretics, and or have certain like congestive congestive heart failure or renal function decline, and. They fluid is um, they get edema and water retention. So then they have more water weight. It affects their bodily functions and it affects your the scale the number on the scale. Interesting. Mm-hmm. So dehydration will impair the body's ability to function properly because you know some of the functions that water has in our body. What do you think are some of the functions that water might have? Uh, skin. It keeps your skin not dry. That's a that's awesome. Yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because that's actually one way that we look at like a patient and we do a a skin fold. Like you, uh, the back of their hand, you just uh, pinch their skin. And if it stays up a long time, it's called tenting. And that means that they're mildly dehydrated because it doesn't, it's not as elastic and goes down quickly. So that's a kind of a hydration status thing. Yeah, that's a, that's a neat test. I bet everyone's grabbing the back of their hand right now. Yeah, I am too. Pinching their, pinching their skin to see how they are. Yeah. So that's called tenting, the tenting test. Well, it's, Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm familiar with a different kind of tenting. Oh, I knew you were going to bring that up. Oh, I can't resist that one. <laughs> but yeah, that's exactly it. Dry skin it could be an indicator of not enough fluid. Uh, headaches too, right? Yeah, absolutely. Headaches, dry mouth. That's kind of obvious. Or maybe not. I don't know. Lightheadedness, dizziness. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, dry mouth and eyes. Oh, really? Eyes too, yeah, I guess. Anything that's dry on your body is probably related to uh, not enough water. It could indicate that for sure because water in the body, it can help regulate body temperature because the fluid in the sweat or perspiration allows the muscle to release heat that builds up while exercising. Okay. Also, water carries nutrients around our bloodstream and our body and it carries away waste to get excreted. Right. Uh, It also functions as a lubricant to cushion joints, um, moistens the eyes, protects the organs and the tissues, and protects brain and spinal cord. So every every part of our body system. Yeah, and it regulates blood pressure and heart function because the amount of water in the bloodstream helps with um, just maintaining your blood pressure. Right, okay. And having not enough can impact the viscosity of the blood and then possibly... Uh, be related to increased risk of blood clotting. Well, there you go. Who knew? Yeah. And how do we lose fluid? Well, we excrete it. We uh, sweat it out. Excrete it how? Uh, by going pee. Yeah. Yeah. And sweating. And is sweating. Excretion. Yeah. And breathing. Well, yeah, that's true. You never, you don't think of that, but there is moisture, I guess, in our breath. It totally, especially if, say, you sleep with your mouth open. I'm, I'm not... I'm not sure about that. <laughs> if you wake up with a really parched mouth, it might mean that you're an open mouth breather and sleeper. Isn't that like a Seinfeld thing, a mouth a mouth breather? Didn't they <laughs> do an episode on that? Yeah, it was a funny one. Yeah, and that like that again, it just it increases uh, you know dry mouth and that awful feeling of like cotton mouth. Yeah. Uh, so also, how, how else do we? 
uh, lose moisture, lose moisture, lose water. Well, it is losing moisture for sure. If you have a fever, right, you lose by um, excess sweating and yeah, you're hot, so yeah. you're losing it. Yeah, yeah, and through the bowels. So diarrhea. If you have um, loose, frequent bowel movements, you're losing fluid that way. If you have vomiting, you're losing fluid that way. A sign of inadequate fluid intake could be constipation. So if you're not getting enough fluid to help the fiber in the bowel to uh, keep the stool soft, right. that uh, could mean that you're mildly dehydrated. Or urinary tract infections are another real um, big indicator that someone's probably not getting enough fluid. Oh, really? Because like the water would flush that, like help sort of flush out the issue down there? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, actually, some of the long-term complications of inadequate fluid intake over time, kidney stones is a big one. So uh, urinary tract infections, but also kidney stones, because drinking water increases the volume of urine, and oxalate stones are what kidney stones are made out of, and they are formed from concentrated urine. So people that move from a climate, like a moderate temperature climate to a hot climate, like to Florida or Arizona, their risk of kidney scones go way up. Oh, wow. Because it's all of a sudden they're in a dry climate and right. their body's not used to that. And they, if they haven't compensated by drinking more fluid, then yeah, you really increase your risk of developing kidney stones. Mm, like crazy. Which is way more common in men oh, than yeah. women. Yeah. Because of their body or because of their their drinking habits? Good question. I think a combination of both, but it is right. um, a higher uh, risk in men. Okay. Interesting. So if the body's continually compensating for an inadequate fluid intake, other risks of certain diseases may be higher, such as uh, certain cancers, um, heart disease, uh, kidney stones, and obesity. Okay. So Harvard researchers found men who drank at least six cups of water a day were half as likely to get bladder cancer versus men who drank less. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, bladder cancer is a big one. And colon cancer, they're finding also uh, in Seattle, Washington, researchers studied this. And women who drank five cups of water a day uh, had a 45% lower risk than women who drank two cups or less. And with men, it was for a minimum of four cups a day had a 32% risk, reduced risk of colon cancer. Wow, that's amazing. And that's not really a lot of water. I mean, like we're supposed to be getting like, what, like eight to 12 cups a day? Yeah, we'll talk about the requirements in a little bit. But uh, yeah, it's eight by eight, right? They That's what they used to say, eight by eight. Like eight ounces, eight times a day, like eight cups but we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, but I'm just sort of in reference to the requirements for these in these cancer studies. It's not really that much water that they're consuming in order to lower their cancer risk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. It's just it's um, drinking more than two cups. Yeah, which is pretty easy, I would think. Well, twenty percent of our fluid requirements come from the food we eat. If you're eating the right food. Well, probably, there's good, probably not a lot of water in processed food. You know, it's funny because actually you're right. If you eat a lot of salt or protein, your kidneys need more water to excrete the excess. Right. And so if you have a high meat diet or you eat a lot of high sodium processed foods, restaurant foods, fast foods, you're going to have to need, you're going to have to drink more water to yeah. help your body. Yeah, right. So it's, yeah, if you're drinking, if you are eating a minimally processed whole foods, like the green light diet that we talked about a couple of episodes ago, episode 24, I think it was on the ultra processed foods. Like the red light, green light. Yeah. The, yeah. The processed food one. If you're getting more of the green light foods, you're going to be getting naturally more water in your diet because the... The water content is higher in the... Vegetables and fruits. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. So it is something to consider in terms of another reason to eat well. Absolutely. So with the heart disease, uh, researchers looked at 20,000 men and women, and it was a study on the Seventh-day Adventist population, and they found that women who had five glasses, like eight-ounce glasses of water, had a 41% less likely to die from heart attack 
And for men, it was a 54% reduction in heart attack wow. death. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. Because drinking water may act to thin the blood to prevent clots, as I mentioned before. It just affects the viscosity of the water. Of the, bl- of the blood. The, the bloods. Yeah, exactly. The water, Bodily fluids. Yeah. So with um, kidney stones, we talked a little bit about the oxalates that form the stones. And drinking more water helps to increase the volume of urine so that it helps to prevent kidney stones. If you have a lot of soft drinks like cola and soft drinks with phosphoric acid, that increases your risk of kidney stones also. Oh, really? And do you... I think you were saying, or I'm sure you'll mention this at some point about the caffeine in like coffee and cola, like pop soda has caffeine, right? Right. So, and it has, what's it, a diuretic? Is that what it's called? Uh, a diuretic a, effect. A diuretic effect. So it, it reduces, can you explain it? <laughs> um, it's actually, they haven't found that there's a huge relationship between drinking regular coffee and the diuretic effect. But with alcohol, there definitely is a diuretic effect. Oh, really? Um, okay. But if you have more than like three cups of coffee a day, then that is going to affect your overall fluid. And you might be, it might affect your, like just other foods and fluids too. That you're, If you're drinking too much coffee, you're probably not drinking enough water. And there might be other things that are influenced in your day. But one or two cups of coffee is not going to affect, it's not going to have much of a effect on your hydration. Oh, okay. I always thought it, it, uh, Dehydrated? unless that's changed, well, the, the yeah, information's there ha- changed, yeah. but I always thought that, yeah, coffee had like a dehydrating effect. And if you drank a cup of coffee, then you kind of had to make up for it with a cup of water to get back to even again. Right, right. I always think that anyway. So it's, it maybe is good for me to keep thinking that because it, I just end up drinking more water. Yeah, just absolutely. Think, oh, I had a cup of coffee. I better have a cup of water now to <laughs> cancel it out. I think it's more like if you drank two pots of coffee a day of regular coffee, I then don't. that would have like a diuretic effect. But, uh, you know, the just moderate amount of coffee was, is fine. And yeah. it's, it's actually adding to your fluid. Decaf coffee and herbal tea have no caffeine. So there's, uh, it's like adds to your so it counts as a, a glass of water. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Things like things like juice, though, probably don't because of everything else in them. Or would, do they still count? Like no, in- they count, but it's just... So that's a good... I'm glad you brought that up because um, when I mentioned about obesity risk, when I'm talking about... We're talking about like the type of fluid you choose. So if kids are, grow up drinking sweetened drinks and um, soft drinks, pop... Uh, juice, they're getting a lot of empty calories and maybe not drinking enough water because they're not getting used to that, just the water taste without the sweetness. Right. And then that can increase the risk of obesity over a lifetime. Because they're getting a bunch of sugar with their fluid. Yeah. 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 And our, and we don't calculate, like our body doesn't register that we've had any calories when we drink sweetened beverages. So you can have like a big gulp or unlimited big gulp and your body still wants its meal because you don't, the fluid calories in a sweetened beverage don't register as like calories. Yeah. Your body thinks it hasn't eaten, but they're like invisible calories, I guess. eh? Yeah. It just doesn't, uh, it doesn't fill you up, I guess. And, but it's still adding calories. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, The empty calories of sugar, right? Yeah, for sure. So yeah, water is the best fluid for all ages. For those who participate in active sports, like over 45 minutes at a time and a sweat a lot, or maybe even wear heavy equipment outside because they're working or find themselves in a hot and humid environment for extended time periods, um, extra water And even sports drinks can offer a way to prevent dehydration, muscle cramps, and getting tired too quickly. Yeah. um, We do a lot of water sports. and We sure do. I know. I was kiting yesterday. Oh, fun, fun. (laughs) With water sports or even swimming or splashing around at the lake even, you don't feel hot because 
you're in the water, you're being cooled by the water, but your body is still working. Yes. And because like, let's say you're out running on a hot day, you're going to be sweating buckets and you're going to be like, oh, I'm so thirsty because your body is telling you that. But when you're doing water sports or swimming or playing at your friend's pool or whatever, you might not feel that sweating. You might not feel the effects of the dehydration the same way. Yeah, that's true. Um, Good point. So you got to remember to, even though uh, you don't feel it, that your body is still working and needs that that water yeah. in- intake. Absolutely. That's a good, yeah. You should drink at least one to two cups of water up to four hours before exercise and drink another half to one and a half cups of fluid about two hours before playing a sport um, or being active outside in the hot weather. That's kind of hard to remember. I think I, I just drink water <laughs> like on a regular basis and then I don't have to like calculate the formula and all that. <laughs> okay. Just, just always have a glass on the go. I just keep a jug of water with me all the time and, and I leave a glass by the sink and every time I go in the kitchen, I f- fill it up and chug it down and and then I don't really count, but I'm pretty sure I'm getting lots of water. Good. Yeah. Well, actually, you need about three liters, which is about 12 cups of water based on your um, man, because you're like, there's different. Because I'm a man. <laughs> because of different requirements for individuals. Women need um, about nine cups or 2.2 liters of fluid over the day. So children ages one to eight need about a liter of fluid. Uh, which is about four cups. Yeah, four cups. And then um, older kids, nine to 18 years old, need almost two liters, so 1.6 to 1.8 liters. Right. And that, remember, it's dependent on the activity level, uh, the climate. Like if we're in a really hot climate, they're going to need more fluid. And, you know, what they're eating, too. Yeah, so like your minimum requirement for like sitting, doing nothing, just existing. Right. Is that those numbers you just said. But if you're out running around in the hot summer day and sweating, and then you're going to need quite a bit more. Yeah. Yeah. And if you are, you know, active for more than 45 minutes, like doing some sort of endurance activity, like playing a soccer game or um, out riding your bike or whatever it is, you might need to replenish some of the electrolytes too. So that's why you eat oranges when you're playing soccer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you can make your own electrolyte drink with orange juice and a teaspoon of salt because you get the same that's like in an IV solution. If you were dehydrated and you went to the hospital and needed IV, you get the a little bit of glucose from the orange. You get some potassium, which is an electrolyte, a mineral that you need, and you get a little bit of the sodium from the uh, little bit of salt you should put in there. Hmm. There you go. So that's why like Gatorade and Powerade are a little... Um, kind of salty because they have a little bit of the sodium, but a lot of times they have all these extra flavors and and colors in them, which isn't so great. Yeah, for sure. You know, it's interesting with the, with the oranges, it's the only sport I've ever seen that like the, the, with soccer, Mm. I eat oranges. Ah. Yeah. Everything else is, I've never seen that anywhere else. It's neat. I know with, with hockey, it's, uh, it's beer. (laughs) I'm not, I'm not sure it has the same effects, but that's kind of the, the traditional. Uh, that's pretty funny. After a game. Uh, <laughs> that's so Canadian, eh? I, th- I think that's kind of universal, actually. <laughs> okay. I think it's a hockey thing, but anyway. Yes. Um, you know that thirst recepor- receptors decrease with age. So thirst is not a good indicator that you're, um, you need fluid. Oh, really? They decrease with age. Yeah. So over age 60, you almost, you don't have as good of a thirst receptor happening. So if you start feeling thirsty, you're probably mildly dehydrated. Already. Yeah. You've always said that. Like once you feel thirsty, it's, you're past the point of needing the water. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And like if, uh, it's not just a dry mouth, but so dry that it's hard to form saliva is um, kind of an indicator that you're probably dehydrated. No, oh, for sure. With um, women who are breastfeeding, they need extra water too, actually, because uh, the breast milk is 80% water. So they actually need, uh, similar to a man's requirement, 12 cups or three liters. Well, that makes sense, yeah. Because they're um, having to produce uh, food for the baby. 
For sure. So there's five tips to tip that water glass to your lips. All right, let's hear them. All right, so uh, it's suggested to drink every hour um, through the day, especially in hotter weather. At least every hour. At least every hour, uh, water is the best fluid. Uh, Maybe carry around some sort of water bottle, like either a reusable water bottle that you're um, filling up. And And washing. And washing so that you are remembering to drink. And also remember uh, with the minimally processed foods, uh, fruits and vegetables have naturally high content of water. So try to eat more of those watermelon, cucumber, strawberries. They all have high water content and they're a natural way to get good nutrition plus water in your diet. Yeah, for sure. And maybe replace some of those extra cups of coffee or pop with water or herbal tea. Yep, for sure. And then you're going to get a little bit extra fluid in your system that's good to prevent dehydration and keep your body working well. Right. And reducing the alcohol intake will help with keeping hydrated. Right, because alcohol has the reverse effect. That's right. It has a diuretic effect. So if you have like rye and water, that just kind of equals it out. (laughs) <laughs> this is all just put some water in my uh in my drink and then it'll be okay no, well but that, that's better than just straight rye i guess you yeah. can need a little bit more water um it's every drop counts it's something uh good to remember in the summer too because that's when we need the most water but it's probably also when we tend to drink more because we're outside doing activities that involve having a beer with friends or all those drinking type activities. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, it's... uh, It's good to know. Just to maybe if you do drink alcohol, then drink a glass of water or a cup of water between each drink. And then that keeps the, you know, so that you don't wake up like feeling awful and dry mouth and dehydrated. Um, It's, you know, keeping hydrated through your social hour. Exactly. Yeah. So I'm just going to go over those five tips again. Uh, tip one is drink every hour or more. Right. Drink water every hour. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Mm-hmm. Um, keep your water bottle or re- reusable water container with water in it so that you have it wherever you go. So yeah. You're drinking. If, you, if it's with you or in your space where you're working or doing what you're doing, you're more likely to remember to drink. But if it's not around you, it's probably not the first thing on your mind. So you'll you'll forget. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it's good to keep it with you. Absolutely. And the fruits and vegetables, number three, are high in water content. So those are good to try to include more of those through the day and in the summer months. So watermelon, cucumber, or strawberries are good hydrating fruits. Number four is replace your extra cups of coffee um, and pop with water or herbal teas. Yeah, or decaf coffee works yes yeah okay yeah and number five decrease the amount of alcohol so that you're uh you're keeping more hydrated yes excellent advice and you know actually in episode 25 how to curb cravings when you feel addicted to sweets number three tip was hydrate so that was like to keep your mouth busy with drinking water right. and to help curb cravings for sugary foods. So that's another way to, like, it just shows that water is really important. Yeah, it has a lot of uh, a lot of good effects. Absolutely. All righty. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to add about water? I think Leonardo da Vinci knew what he was talking about. Water is the driving force of all nature. Yeah, that sounds about right. All right. Well, thank you, Sandra. Keep hydrated in this dry season, Rob. Okay, Sandra. (laughs) I'll do that. Okay. See you on the water. Yeah, exactly. Thanks for joining us today on My Wife the Dietitian. If you like what you heard, don't be shy. Leave us a comment or review and be sure to share our podcast with your friends. If you'd like to hear more, hit that subscribe button. You can also follow us on our social media pages for updates, episode trailers, and other odds and ends. For more info and links on what we discussed on today's episode, check the show notes. We'll be back next week with another informative and fun-filled episode. Thank you.